our top story now. The world watched in horror as these two young journalists were executed on live television. 24-year-old WDBJ reporter Allison Parker and 27-year-old photojournalist Adam Ward both worked for WDBJ in Virginia. They were ambushed by a disgruntled former co-worker. Vester Lee Flanagan, who went by the name Bryce Williams, killed himself after leading police on a chase thereafter. He also posted a gruesome video of the shooting online. And on Twitter, he ranted about his victims, blaming them for being fired. Flanagan also sent a 23-page manifesto to ABC News by fax, calling himself a powder keg, ready to quote, go boom. Steve. Thank you, Peter. So what pushes a person like that over the edge? Let's talk to our panel of experts. Steve Cardian is a retired Westchester County police detective and a self-defense instructor. Paul Violas is the host of Security Brief and former supervisor with Manhattan DA's office. And Darby Fox is a clinical psychologist. Good morning to all of you. Thank Good you. Good morning. Good morning. So we've been talking about this shooter guy. And it sounds like he was an angry guy mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reasons. And he got really, really angry. And we're wondering this morning, was he just really angry or was he mentally unstable? Well, there's no question about it from the information that's been presented already, Steve, that Flanagan fits the quintessential profile of the individual that typically perpetrates acts of violence at work. There's no question about that. Which is what? Which is the, when you talk about the profile, the profile in its purest sense is a set of behavioral characteristics that over time show predictability. And when you talk about the way he was at work, uh, the fact that he was a loner, he couldn't take criticism, he was shunned by others, people didn't want to work with him. It was common knowledge right. that he had an anger problem, and you had people in the field that said, I simply won't work with him. Sure. Well, I think it's important to remember that even though he did have this um, anger issue and it was built up, I would say there was a psychopathology with what he was presenting because he, it would built up over a long period of time it didn't necessarily make sense he was looking for things to as he described himself he was a powder keg and, so he, don't you think it sounded like he was trying to get even because the cops it, escorted exactly him out was. and he you know he was it, just never happy it, it wasn't about just being an angry person we see a lot of people with anger or depression and they don't turn to violence it Absolutely. was a different it was a different mindset steve uh, over the period of time since early 2000, they, they had difficulties with him. It, it culminated in 2013 when he got fired. Two years it took him to sit and fester and come up with a plan. And, and once he decided upon that plan, uh, he, he took his time. He went about it and he, he orchestrated this like he was writing a movie. Sure. The interesting thing about it, because he was escorted out of the television station when he was fired. And, you know, he sued him and then the case was thrown out. But rather than go back to the station with the gun, he goes to a location where the station personnel are doing this live report where there is no security, and he knew that, and that's where he decided to make his mark. He wanted his own broadcast, Steve. He, he, wanted, wanted, he wanted someone to listen to him, right? Darby, from a psychological yeah. perspective, he wanted someone to listen to him. So guess what, Steve? Everyone's listening to him right it now. It was a long-term problem with not getting enough attention and feeling like he was not acknowledged, and that was a psychological thing. He was not operating in a logical... But the thing about him because he was a broadcaster. He knew that exactly. if he took uh, his cell phone or his GoPro and he filmed it, everybody would look at it. And we're not broadcasting it, but it is online and people have seen it. And once you see it, you can never forget it. Right. But he wanted to go out as the guy who did that. And we're not. It, it was a cowardly that. act. He got his 15 minutes of fame through digital media. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we're likely going to see this happen again. Steve's so right. I mean, he's using social media to broadcast his manifesto, and everyone's jumping all over it. Sheriff David Clark uh, had this observation. He was on the channel last night. Listen. Well, he couldn't deal with his inadequacy. So he woke up this morning, he looked in the mirror, didn't like what he saw, and decided the only way he was going to make a name in TV news was to go out and find two people doing their job that had nothing to do with his inadequacies or inferiority yeah. complex and take hey. them out so that he could be the headline news. I think the best thing that we can do after today is never speak of this guy again. He's got a good point. Let's just refer to him as the shooter as we talk about what happened yesterday. Okay, so uh, people are watching right now. A lot of them are going to go to work in an hour or two. How do you know if somebody at work is just really angry or really angry and going to do something about it? 
It's hard to know exactly. I mean, we have much better vision. 20 hindsight, 20 is always 2020. But when he went through a history of getting fired places. He had continual anger issues with a huge variety of people, which is some sign that there is some kind of problem we should look into. Sure. Steve, there's something called a violence continuum. And real quickly, you know, there's a set of behaviors that lead to violence. Indirect threats, loud outbursts, direct threats, signs of depression, withdrawal signs. That in progression, with in concert with the behavioral profile, clearly sh shows a point of predictability in violent behavior. It has since I've been doing this since 1985. It did it again yesterday. You know, and the guy had a history of suing stations that he had exactly. worked for right. for a myriad of reasons. And it sounds like uh, one station he worked at for, I think he sued him for 20000 or fifteen or 20000 dollars the station actually settled, but in many cases they settled because they just don't want to go to court because it winds up costing them more. Right. And, you know, based upon what Paul said, the, all those red flags, they, they certainly lead to an end result. And unfortunately, sometimes in law enforcement, we're not able to put that together because we can't force him to go for a psychological eva evaluation unless he's a danger to himself or, or others uh, or something else prompts that where he's arrested in order protection is issued, issued and a judge issues a psychological order. All and right. to Darby's point, too, this is a mental health issue. It's not a gun control issue, without question. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Steve and Paul and Darby, thank you very much. Great discussion. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Pleasure. All right.